Hello everyone, so in this video I'm going to show you how to design, make, cut and hopefully paint later on um, a stencil, a stencil with a street art. So today I have got myself some sort of funny looking horse um, and the first task to do is to be separating your subject away from its background that would make it a lot easier to make the stencil later on. So I'm going to be using uh, the quick selection tool. I'm going to just sort of work um, the zebra, selecting every single sort of bit of him, her, I guess. So it's just a simple sort of left click with this tool. And if you want to deselect, hold down Alt. So here, here I want to deselect the series. So I'm just going to hold down Alt, just sort of remove it a bit. Okay, that is the whole thing. Pretty much now. Um, selected apart from this tiny patch and its face there um, so if you do control C and then control J you should select it and copy it onto a new layer um, and then you'd probably want to go through different parts and just clean up sort of gaps like this with the eraser tool or we might be able to just get away with a smaller selection once again, using Alt and left click to add and remove selection, tidy that up. Um, don't be too fussy with hairy parts because that's just going to be a bit too much of a nightmare to cut out when you get to it, so just sort of simplify it a bit. I'm just doing this quickly and roughly. Unfortunately, I did miss a spot there, but could sort of work that out and figure it out once we get round to um, making the final design of the stencil. I'm just going to quickly look in here and just clean that space out there. Okay, so once you've got that Selected. I recommend you if you just do Control C and Control J once again, just to sort of give yourself a nice safe layer. Um, and so with this new one, we are going to make it into black and white. So that you can do Control Shift Alt and B. And I'll bring up your black and white menu. Turn the should be an image adjustments and black and white controls. Alt Shift Control B. And then just straight away hit OK, and you've got it instantly in an even black and white tone. So for this next step, we want to simplify the toning of gradients. We've got lots of greys in here, and we just want a black and white zebra. Um, so image adjustments, threshold. Um, with this tool, you change the level, and so if you scrub along here you can sort of see that it sort of detects different ranges of um, black and white. So um, just going for some in the mid-range works quite well. Uh, if you want to be a bit more careful with different sections of a subject, some subjects maybe you may lose details like for example um, I want bit more striping in this leg here or I want to try and get the nostrils in of the zebra then you do that on separate layers and you um, erase and merge them up together 
So initially I'm just going to go straight for the middle. So about there, we got a little bit of shadow. Um, and yeah, I might erase that little lump because it looks like a penis. Um, and then, so once you got that, you got your straight black and white. And you can immediately see from here the sort of idea of a stencil coming through. Uh, next thing we want to do is to go and remove the white from this layer. So go to select color range, then down in the other option there'll be highlights. Just flick these to the end and that will just straight away remove all white, or at least to select it all, and then just delete that from your layer. And then we've got a um, just solely black sort of stencil kind of marking. Um, for this bit, I recommend perhaps getting a new layer for sort of background. I sort of go for a green screen kind of background, so it's got a very um, definite contrast. Um, this bit is a lot of working with your brush and your eraser to try and get a nice strong stencil. If you think about how um, your white or your green is going to be your paper, and the black is going to be where your paint is going to be. So, and, and also when cutting out, this is going to be a bit of a nightmare, and it's going to be creating a sort of island of paper here, which won't connect to the rest of the um, the holding. So we're just going to have to remove this bit and all these bits along here, because they will show up eventually in the printout. So I'm just going to zip through this and I'll be back in a sec. It may be good at some points to actually keep some of these lines because we've got such a deficit of information around here. It's just to, good to break it up so you can get in um, bits of paper line and we can get a um, strong image and strong stencil. Okay, so that's one element of sort of making your stencil. Um, you also want to be going back and forth in between black and erasing to sort of clean up shapes like this. Oops. Um, so that it is one large kind of fit rather than these sort of very strange patchy um, parts. I'm gonna try and use a round brush with pressure so I can control the size just by pressing on my tablet. This is, um, I'm using a drawing tablet right now but you can just easily use do this with a mouse and I have done this kind of thing with a mouse before. So just going around the whole thing you can flick back and forth between eraser and black to sort of tidy up these shapes so that it's you can get nice even clean lines from cutting that just makes life quicker and easier for you. Okay, so that's pretty much the stencil to finish. As you saw in that last part, I go along this top bit here. That may be worth even putting a gap into there and sort of breaking through these lines to try and get all of them connected from top to bottom. Because if you imagine about it, it's going to be very thin strips of paper or gaps of paper. Um, it may even be worth just sort of combining bits up so it doesn't make too much of a nightmare trying to cut out such small little gaps. 
and up here it looks a bit ugly but put gaps into here so it holds the paper a lot better because if you imagine um, if you were trying to do an illegal piece you would want to be moving um, quite quickly and quite carelessly and you don't want your stencil to be ripping and so this will be helping it hold together a bit more and rather than having a long floppy piece of paper hanging out the side of your stencil you'll be able to move around a lot better without destroying your piece before you even get to painting it so that's just about it if um once you have painted it you can also come back and correct it with a free hand on on your spray can or with a marker if you look at Banksy's recent piece in the London tube um, you see him fixing up the sort of mouth of the rat um, with a marker so once that is complete we've got this nice clean black sort of marking of the zebra it's worth copying this under new layer with control C control J and Next, we need to just sort of select the entirety of this using the selection tool once again. Make sure that's all selected. And then we're gonna have to paint it white. Um, we were changing the background to white again. So now we can't really see it, but you can sort of faintly see that there is a sort of line work that appears. Um, that's sort of just an artifact from the selection in painting it white again. But with this, we're going to want to double click onto the layer. Onto the, so, yep, so there. And then we get a stroke option. Um, with this stroke, if we can. Sally get it to work. There we go. So it's normal. Uh, going for like five pixel. It then puts lines around all of these white shapes and that instantly gives us our sort of lines to cut along to. Um, it does sort of identify little bits of um, anomalies that appear from the process. You can go through and erase or paint them over however it is needed. I'm just going to edit the stroke so that it's not so intense. Depending, so it's not so thick. Um, depending on your quality of image, stroke may show up more or less. Can I give me a two pixel? How's that? That's a lot better. Now I can see all this a lot easier. Um, I can refer back to the previous layer that we kept so I can see what the hell is going on. Um, I think with this section here it's very very intense. So I'm going to go back to my black brush and work out what it is I'm looking at. So I want to combine these layers I can. Hmm. Normally that would work. Um, so that thing, because we kept this layer, we're able to come back to it and edit it a bit better. So we can simplify a bit more because this area here is a bit too intense on very fine bits of lines running through at one point so we're going to simplify that a bit more so we'll combine a couple of lines I think this bit will just go it's just way too thin and then copy and paste the new layer select it and paint it white. Uh, 
finally add the stroke with two pixels depending on um, your re resolution you can change that once again I'm going to come in and just sort of fix these up so this little spot in the um, in the eye it's not going to work properly because it's so isolated you could just remember that and get like a white pen and just dab it on there or be very careful with um, a certain technique with your can and get a small little dot to highlight the eye so here we can edit it with eraser remove away or artifacts make these little channels bigger so there's a lot more paper holding it together and that looks alright carry some of these dots just to avoid confusion that should be, nope it's not cool I didn't colour in these hooves so I'll just get the black or the white actually should be a white brush and just fill that in much easier to cut out one single block than a huge mess of hard to figure out um, bits of shading okay so finally I'll leave it there um, to export this you're gonna want to crop down your image just to what you want it to be like so and we're gonna need to export as a as a JPEG because the next program we're going to use to make this into um, a sort of poster to make our stencil um, needs to run through JPEG. So everything should be fine as a default. Export all. I'm just going to stick this onto my desktop. Doesn't matter about the name or whatever. So finally, to make um, large stencils um, you're gonna want at least with the method that I use um, I print out the um, image I make so it will be printed out on loads of A4 pieces of paper and to get this sort of I get the grid to work um, as one large stencil I use block poster so just a story to get started upload an image I need to go to my desktop, find that image. And so immediately um, you've got this sort of thing gridded up for you. Um, I want to just set to A4, have a border, that's fine. I, it doesn't really, I think it's better to have a border because this whole thing is complicated. It depends on the settings of your printer and that's a whole other mess. But in all laziness, I can't be asked to worry about that. So, um, immediately you are given your dimensions of what will be finally once you print it out. So this will be um, 24 inches by 21 inches. Um, you can figure this out by sort of setting five pages in maybe landscape. And this is going to be a 58 by 47 inches high um, stencil piece, which is a ridiculously large and I don't have the paper for that. Um, so for now I'm just going to stick with a two portrait. If landscape's going to be better it's not going to be. Landscape maybe but I think that's going to be just a bit too small for my liking. I quite like a good size to work with. Um, and so yeah, quite happy with a 16 inch zebra and just read the terms and create a poster. That will create it as um, a PDF. So I mean I'm just going to dump this onto my desktop. Worry about that later. 
and so immediately you get this little document um, gives you a bit of information there that's your actual image and it will be placing them onto each individual piece of paper Admittedly, the watermark does get in the way, and that can be annoying. You could work it out um, with a cropping technique. Um, I think I might be happy with that. The black may be a bit too intense, so maybe worth going back out and trying that again. So we'll just adjust this crop to deal with the um, issue of the watermarking. Um, there is an, an option to select the watermark differently. That was a PDF, not a JPEG. I'm happy to replace that. Uh, so, here we go, immediately A4, two pages wide. There is an option uh, to go even larger, but that's premium only options, which of course cost you money. Um, but we're all about trying to save money a bit. Yeah, removing multimark is also a premium option as well. So here we go, test all that. Next, you just want to straight up print, and then you then the next thing is to stick on your poster onto a thicker piece of card. Um, this will just sort of reinforce it a bit more, makes it more sturdy rather than trying to operate with very thin, very weak printer paper. Hopefully, um, don't get the classic case of printers not working with this one. So now, hopefully that you've managed to successfully print uh, your stencil, it should come out like this. Um, we've got our cover photo, and in the case of our one, we have four uh, different A4 sections. Um, the paper which I'm sticking these onto, because just plain printer paper is a bit too weak, especially if you're wanting if you're handling a large piece it's going to be very loose and flimsy and eventually as you're working with your stencil it will tear and it's not strong enough so i use uh lining paper standard sort of stuff for wallpapering i think you put this stuff down before you put down your wallpaper on your wall um, i don't know what exactly what it's really for but it's really good for stencils a brand doesn't matter and the grey doesn't matter, you just want card, just a lot of card um, to make your stencils with. So, uh, the initial thing you need to do is to really just sort of check how your stencil is going to sit on your card. So I'm just going to simply lay it all out like this and that's how I'm going to be cutting uh, this stencil today. Um, you can, if you want, um, cut down the borders so you can line them up exactly, but I find that doesn't really matter and I just kind of fix that later on with a just a marker. Um, in the case of this, I think we're ready to go with it and I'll be fine. So um, just standard print stick will be fine just start sticking it down onto the page. There is um, a sort of technique with this in order to save you money on glue. So you should be able to see the um, sort of faint outlines of the line work through the paper. So just focus on gluing these parts and don't bother gluing large areas of just plain paper because you're not cutting around there and you don't need that to be secured. So I'm just going to work through and just cover all these stripes. You've got huge spaces in which there is not much detail. Just follow along the line and just 
glue down whatever uh, you're going to be needing to cut. You really want to make sure that your lines are sturdy to the page. Um, of course I've got a cutting mat down in order to not damage my surface which I'm working on. Um, personally I don't care about this desk but eventually after thousands of cuts it would eventually dig a hole in the center of my uh, desk and it will ruin the quality of my stencils because there'll be a hole in my table. So I'm just going to quickly run through and just glue all these down, making sure that they roughly line up. Um, initially there is immediately an issue where that if I had um, chosen to cut down the borders, they would align a lot better. Yeah, another example here with the hoofs. There's just really just a small amount of which that needs to be glued. Rather than doing the whole paper, I just can just do straight across like that on those, and immediately I can get straight to gluing them down. And that should be your stencil set um, and ready to cut. It may be worth uh, taking the time to just let all the glue dry underneath um, and you'll be able to have a proper hold on the two papers. This will make it much easier because having a sort of layer of wet glue between your sheets of paper can cause issues when cutting. So with these lines here, where clearly if I'd cut out the border, yeah, these would line up quite nicely, but I'm not too fast and in the end, I can just quickly, easily draw my own lines there and ignore this one. Uh, for this piece, it's going to be a bit more difficult. So you just need to sort of uh, figure it out for yourself on how to manipulate your lines so that they will fit. I don't think that's entirely correct. Uh, it, it, just so that it makes sense for you. And you have to cut out a nice, sweet, nice line. So I think that line there needs to go across and then create a separate stripe on there. Maybe worth giving yourself little markers and colouring in sections so you know what to cut and what not to cut. So once you've finished sticking down your pieces of paper onto your lining paper, and you've fixed any errors you may have along borders um, and your glue is dry, you should be just ready to just cut straight away. Um, now the beauty of doing uh, this method is that you immediately have line work to work with. So it's literally just a simple case of immediately going along each line and cutting out every single piece of paper. And that's our first piece there. Um, eventually you get a feel of how much pressure you kind of need to apply in order to go through both the printer paper and the lining paper. So I'm just going to quickly do some now to sort of show you how uh, this sort of works. So that's um, pretty much it. Um, literally cut out along your lines and you can't go too far wrong with that. Um, I do have, did have a couple of issues, especially along this border part, which I was quite confused as to how some of these lines were meant to line up. So I just sort of free it and just sort of worked it out myself from there. Um, it's just a continuous process of just cutting all this out you're going to end up getting a bit of a sore hand and hopefully not too many cuts on your other hand while steadying the paper. There is issues with lining paper because it's rolled up it sort of springs up like this. Um, I've taped down my lining paper so it doesn't do that and I've got my sort of knife box holding back the rest of the roll. Um, this will be an issue when spray painting so some people prefer using perspex uh, which is quite a lot more expensive considering 
just a roll of 200 meters of lining paper is about two pounds, whereas Perspex is not as big as this sometimes and so much more expensive. At least from my experience of it, I've never really touched this stuff. So one very important thing about cutting out stencils is that you've got to make sure that you have a nice low angle on your knife. Otherwise, if you keep it upright, you eventually, it's like plowing a boat through water and eventually you'll end up pulling up bits of paper like that. Keeping your knife at a low angle, you end up sort of slicing more than pulling your way through the paper. And that will help you not damage your image and not having a pretty shitty stencil at the end of it. Um, I'm now going to crack on with this stencil and finish it off camera. Um, and I'll show you once I have finished what it looks like and hopefully we'll go out and spray paint this and show you sort of techniques of spray painting on a wall and spray painting perhaps on a canvas or on the floor. Hello everyone, so today we are at the um, clay dry walls near Par. Um, this is a very active site, for example this piece um, is covering over a piece which I did last night, so it's very active um, and there's loads of pieces constantly going on. That's also a, a new piece right there. So we have a stencil, we're going to put it onto here. Um, initially, I'm going to say uh, it's always very important to be prepared. I'm not very prepared, as you can tell. The audio quality is going to be a lot worse, as I don't have a proper microphone on. Um, plus, I do not have tape. I've only been able to scrounge together the tiniest little bits of tape of an old box. So always be prepared for when you're painting. I mean, take paint with you, take your tape, stencil, make sure your face is covered for the sake of fumes and identity. So I'm just going to quickly chuck this one up here, like that. Hopefully that tape will hold it enough. Make sure your can is shaped up enough. And don't be worried about getting paint in your hands. It doesn't really cause any harm to your hands or in your skin. And just simply fill in the gaps. Today I'm using a Cobra can with a standard Cobra stock cap, which is a medium cap. That a medium cap will be just fine. Uh, any any brand of paint would be just fine as well. Once you've finished painting, make sure to take off the wall as soon as you can. This will stop any wet paint sticking the stencil to the wall and ruining your piece. So that's the basics of just painting onto a wall or a surface like that. So now to show you. Um, painting onto the floor. This should be a much easier because you're not having to deal with gravity but you will get issues of the paper bending. So in order to fix this is either get loads of paint, get, get, sorry, get loads of tape down. Um, you could also stack cans on the edges of your stencil so that holds it down. Unfortunately I've only got the one can today. Um, other I ideas you could use is perhaps just finding small stones to hold down points. Of course the stone would be heavy, needs to be heavy enough. Uh, I recommend using uh, nuts, sort of M8 nuts, um, and they will hold down. And they're quite easy to place in, in little spots. You can arrange them on their sides so they don't, so they can hold down spots like this. Excuse me while a train goes past. Okay, so quite simply, I'm not too fast, um, but You'd use stones or nuts and bolts, all sorts of things to hold down your stencil. So it's nice, clean, sharp lines. Uh, you want to especially do this for um, canvas pieces or fine art pieces. But we're just going to go straight ahead. There is the issue of, as you're painting the ground, gravity is going to affect your can. So you're going to want to have your can slightly upright, because having it pointing down, you won't get paint into the stem and taking it out of, the, out of your cap. So be sure to keep it slightly upright with your paint.
normally, once again, don't be afraid to use a hand, but I'm in a bit of a rush and I need to take my hand too fast. Always make sure to clean your cap, holding upside down, until it runs clear and sounds a little bit different. So there we go, there's our funny looking horse and that's how to do stencils. I mean obviously this stencil is very small as you can tell by, by my hand. Um, and as I spoke, as you may remember, speaking about um, fixing the tops like up here by just sort of simply spraying across, that would be much easier with a larger piece. Um, for example, I'm doing that. It could just be a quick, simple bit of paint on there. Maybe a little bit there. That, just keeping it at an angle, maybe using a skinny cap or a low pressure can to, in order to get a much nicer finish with it. Um, another thing you could do, you could also get a marker and add and draw some lines on. If you look at Banksy's most recent piece in the London Tube, you can see that in one piece he repairs his stencil um, with a marker. So that's all I have to show. That's how to make, how to design, make and spray a stencil. Hopefully this will be useful for you. Thanks very much.